Alrighty, we'd like to get started now with the services for Lyle Craig Showstrom. My name is Britton Atkinson, I'm a funeral director here at White Pine, and I'm delighted to be here with you guys in, in helping conduct these services. Lyle was born on February 25th, 1955, in Salina, Kansas, and he died January 17th, 2023, here in North Logan, Utah. Today we'll start our services by start our services with an invocation by Kelly Nielsen, a brother-in-law. Following the prayer, we'll have a eulogy by Eric Showstrom, a son, and then we'll have a musical num a musical selection played off of the phone from Josh Groban, "You Raise Me Up," and we'll go to that point. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the opportunity that we have to meet as family and friends to celebrate Lyle and the great man that he was. We're thankful for the blessings that God has given us and an opportunity to know him and be his friend and to experience the things we have with Lyle. Thankful for the opportunities to know that he's, he's well taken care of and that he is loved by so many people on, on this earth. Father, we ask you that will bless those who are taking this ceremony for him, that they will be able to express their feelings, that the Spirit will be here to help them and help us understand and remember Lyle and all the great things he's done for each and every one of us. Father, again, we're thankful for this day and thankful for this opportunity, and we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dad passed away on January 17th at the age of 67. He was born in Salina, Kansas, and raised in Lander, Wyoming, on a cattle ranch where he learned to value hard work. Yeah, just, oh, sorry. Just <clears throat> he played football in high school and college, and was a lifelong fan of the Wyoming Cowboys and Denver Broncos. He was a graduate of Lander Valley High School, worked to pay his own way through Casper College, and earned a degree in law enforcement. Lyle's first law enforcement job was in Glen Rock, Wyoming. He later worked for a Green River Police Department and became a detective with the Sweetwater County Sheriff's Department. He was an avid sportsman, loved to hunt and fish, learned to scuba dive, and later taught scuba to officers um, at the search and rescue team. After relocation from Utah to Cochrane, Colorado back to Wyoming, Lyle and Casey married in 1992. They enjoyed cross-country skiing, biking, and scuba diving in exotic loca um, locations such as Fleming Gorge and Bird Lake. <laughs> He changed course and went to work in the oil and gas industry for Schlumberger, fracturing natural gas wells, coil tubing, operating equipment, and was stationed in the western U.S., as well as offshore in North Sea, <coughs> Russia, Scotland, Belgium, France, Alaska, and Denver. Um, Casey and Dad traveled together to many countries and went at home. Lyle always enjoyed barbecue and good real estate. Lyle retired after 19 years at Schlumberger, and the couple moved to Utah to be close to family. The road has become a bike around the neighborhood, enjoyed making new friends, and entertaining his golf buddies. As a self decline, he kept a positive attitude and was always fun to be around. He kept us laughing and was always good for a joke and had a good time. Lyle was preceded in death by his parents, Ralph and Marion Schostrom. He was survived by a sweetheart of 37 years, Casey, his three children, Christina, Craig, and Eric. Um, his grandchildren, Bailey, AJ, Ian, Layla, Lucy, and Lily. His brother Ron and sisters Dana and Ingrid. Um, that will be all great and best. We appreciate y'all coming out today and being here with us. Thank you.
when troubles come and my heart burden me, then I am still. All righty, we'll move along now with a couple of speakers. We'll first hear from Tacey Schostrom, his wife, and then from Christina Schostrom, his daughter. And then we'll have a couple of tributes after Christina. Uh, the tribute comes from Georgie and Tom Keelers, who are friends, but they will be read by Shelley Peterson, a sister-in-law. And then after Shelley's read the, those tributes, we'll have a tribute from Kathy and Rocco McCall, who are also friends. And that one will be read by Lane Nelson, a sister-in-law. And then we'll go to that point. Gets to me because Lyle definitely raised me up to more than I can be. 
and I want to thank you all for being here today. It means so much to me and the family. Each one of you have touched our lives in many beautiful ways, and I thank you. Oh no, I'm gonna start already. <laughs> I'm going to look at you. <laughs> Weil was a man of many, many talents and spent quite a few years in careers where he could help others. He was a volunteer firefighter, a police officer and detective. He was even an EMT for a while. He was also an aerobics instructor, if you could believe that. <laughs> A scuba instructor, he worked in construction and at a coal mine. He eventually worked, went to work in the energy industry. He loved to fish, hunt, ride, and occasionally raise some heck. <laughs> Lyle well, loved nature, and when he was in about the fourth grade, he got an owl and he named it Abe. I don't know why. He didn't know why either. It had been injured and they brought it to the ranch to, for rehabilitation. So it became Lyle's project to nurse the owl back to health. Uh, later when it was doing better, Lyle would get a dead rabbit, hold it up in the air and the owl would swoop down and grab it right out of his hand. The owl would perch on the TV antenna and it would hoot at Lyle. Lyle naturally would hoot back. <laughs> and for those of you who have seen Lyle bark at your dog when you're out walking with your dog, I think that's where this all started. <laughs> the owl would see Lyle heading down the creek and follow him with his five foot wingspan so it was not your typical pet. But Abe hung around the ranch for quite a few years, finally disappeared, no doubt ready to be back in the wild after Lyle's tender loving care. Lyle was mostly fearless, but he was afraid of dental work. <laughs> this was because as a teenager, he needed to have a tooth extracted. And for some reason, the dentist actually had to put a knee on his chest to get leverage to get a grip on that tooth to pull it out. A little traumatic. Or, as I thought when I heard the story, this was probably really a veterinarian and not a dentist. <laughs> in any, any case, forever after, Lyle did not want anyone to touch his face, not even me. In high school and at Christmas time, Lyle and his friends used to ride down the snow covered main street of his little hometown on snowmobiles. Very small town. And they had water guns, and they would aim at the Christmas lights drawn across the street. So naturally in Wyoming, in the cold weather, the lights would immediately freeze and explode. <laughs> Apparently this was his first brush with the law. <laughs> when Lyle and the gang were trying to evade the police on their snowmobiles, I don't know that they ever caught Lyle, but those who were caught gave up names. Lyle's father was notified, <laughs> and it was early curfew, early chores for many, for a long time afterwards. <sighs> also at Christmas time, the family always had gothel beater, which is Swedish for pickled herring, which if you haven't tried it, it's delicious. But they also, his mom also made a Swedish traditional loot bisque, which is soaked in lye, and it is as bad as it sounds. Nobody would eat it, and even the cats would take it out and bury it. <laughs> In high school, Lyle worked at a local feed mill for a couple of winters. It was hard work moving those 80 pound sacks of feed. But Lyle was used to throwing hay bales, uh, which is where he got those broad shoulders. He loved playing and watching football, and during his college years, even worked a couple of summers as a forest fire, forest firefighter. 
He worked part-time at different police agencies and then graduated with his degree and started out as a patrolman. He was an excellent marksman. He had lots of trophies for that and numerous commendations from various agencies. Lyle married his first wife, Patrice, in 1976, and they had three wonderful children, Chris, Craig, and Eric. The family moved to Green River, where Lyle attained the rank of senior patrolman in only three months. So he was very good at his job. But sadly, the marriage dissolved when the kids were still quite young. And I know that Lyle's greatest regret in life was that he didn't, he couldn't always be with his kids when they were growing up. I know Lyle. in Rock Springs where we had a mutual friend. She was a court reporter. And I took one look at Lyle and I decided, hey, that guy has possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> he was into scuba and worked search and rescue and organized an underwater recovery team. And through his supervision, it became known as one of the top in the Rocky Mountain region. He told me that it didn't bother him much to recover a drowning victim unless it was a child, and then it reminded him of his own children, and he really had a hard time with that. He also taught me to scuba, and I got my certification, and this is now a sport that daughter Christina and niece Tasia enjoy. Over the years, we dove everywhere from Flaming Gorge, which is very cold and murky, and frankly, a little bit scary. <laughs> to Bear Lake, to the Caribbean. We had lots of fun. My work transferred me to Vernal, and the long distance relationship wasn't easy, so Lyle left the Sheriff's Department. It was great at first, <laughs> but difficult for him to find work in a small town, so that summer, he decided he was going to write a book. So, uh, about his police experiences. He did this in the backyard with an extension cord out to my electric typewriter, <laughs> all the while tanning his back. <laughs> we decided the manuscript was not, we could not monetize it, so. Uh, but it's too bad we don't have those pages still. I would love to be able to read that again. Wiles took some classes and was certified as an EMT and worked part-time with the ambulance crew in Vernal and also part-time with UPS. He practiced needle sticks incessantly on oranges, not me, <laughs> and <clears throat> was called out at all hours of the day and night. Wiles would bring the kids down from Green River for weekend visits and we would rent videos at Blockbuster, play games, eat at taco time, walk over to McDonald's for hot fudge sundaes, and play croquet in the park. We decided we needed more opportunity than Vernal could give and moved to Pueblo, Colorado. Lyle loved having fun and made friends wherever he went, wherever we went. We spent several years in Pueblo and made some great lifelong friends. There were also trips with the kids to the ranch with fishing, hiking the Red Butte, feeding the animals, and riding horses. And I have so many wonderful memories of those days. Long story short, Lyle and I got married, moved back to Wyoming. He was a wonderful husband. He was, he was so sweet. When I asked if I could get something for him, he would say, just your love. <laughs> that always made points with me. <laughs> he gave me so many flowers over the years. He actually had a count set up with different florists. One year for my birthday, he bought an entire seven-layer double fudge cake from a restaurant known for its huge portions. That, that cake was yay tall. <laughs> but he was the recipient of some of that cake. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He could seem gruff, but he was really a big teddy bear. He was my rock and my defender from the storms of life. Although he could stir up a storm or two himself. <laughs> About six months into our marriage, Lyle had an accident at work. I remember getting the call at my office that Lyle had fallen and I should get to the hospital in Rock Springs. But since it was an hour's drive from where we lived, they didn't want to alarm me. So when I got there, they told me it was pretty serious, he hadn't gained conscious consciousness, and that a flight for life was on standby to get us to Salt Lake, which was the nearest big hospital. He underwent surgery and it seemed touch and go, and family was summoned. I'll never forget the kids. Coming to see him. I'm being so understandably upset at seeing their big strong dad in their mom's bed. But fortunately, Lyle had a very hard head. <laughs> he bounced back, rallied, and within a week he was ready to come back home. <clears throat> when we got home, Lyle told me that on that flight there was an angel with him and that she had beautiful blonde hair. He was not referring to me. <laughs> I wish we had talked more about that experience. Um, it was very personal to him, but uh, I know that he had a heavenly visit. I also remember getting back home and the terrible haircut I gave him to try and even out his partially shaved head. <laughs> but he never asked me to cut his hair again. <laughs> Being the tough guy he was, he ignored his doctor's advice and <laughs> didn't do therapy, but he eventually got his swagger back on his own. About two years after that, we both got transfers to Denver and bought our first home. One summer weekend, Lyle had gone to run some errands, and I went to the back patio in my swimsuit to get some sun. Tanning was a big deal back then. And I locked myself out of the house on the way out. I thought Lyle would be home soon. But after an hour or so went by and I'm getting sunburned, I realized, you know what, the only shade here is in our big garden shed. So I went in and folded, unfolded the lounge chair and laid down and, you know, in the heat, I soon fell asleep. I was rudely awakened by the sound of the shed door opening and a manly scream <laughs> at seeing my prone body. <laughs> Lyle and his friend Rick, a D Denver police officer, had come back to look for a tool and there was what looked like a dead body laying in the shed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, we all were a little flummoxed about that, but uh, after our heart rates calmed down a little bit, we had a good laugh. Another time I went on vacation to Mexico, we went on vacation to Mexico with my sister Carla. One early morning, the front desk called the room, no doubt about a timeshare presentation, and the guy on the phone asked for Senor Lili <laughs> and I I snickered and handed the phone to Lyle they talked but later when I was telling the story to my sister we got to laughing but so hard we had tears running down our faces especially with the accent that neither one of us could do but for the rest of the trip, he was referred to as Senor Lily, <laughs> which he took in pretty good humor. In his career, Lyle had assignments all over Europe, 
to work on a platform in the North Sea, he had to take an annual training class for um, offshore survival. It entailed being strapped into a helicopter simulator, being plunged into this huge tank in the dark with waves simulating the, the, the ocean. So in order, well, they had to do that to learn how to escape in, in the event of a crash. With his scuba diving experience and rescue work, he was a natural and always passed with flying colors. So in those days, he had lots and lots of frequent flyer miles. He had enough miles to fly his first class to Paris one year. I asked him not to waste those miles, but economy and coach was not that much different than first class. But he insisted that international was pretty fantastic, and he got his way. Probably one of very few occasions that he did. But I had to eat my words because it was fantastic. I told him I didn't even want to get off the plane. I just wanted to keep flying around. <laughs> then, oh, super. Since many of his assignments were in Russia, he had, he said he had the Russian vocabulary of a three-year-old, or at least a three-year-old who cusses. <laughs> he had some wild stories about living in a man camp in uh, uh, what used to be an old gulag in Siberia, so they had it pretty rough. He could run all the equipment and ended up mentoring a lot of the of young guys. During Lyle's overseas assignments, which were typically 28 days on and 28 off, I kept the home fires burning, and it's good that we were both independent because we we uh, had to live several lives and then be together again. In those days, you had to pay a lot for long-distance phone calls, and I never knew if I was going to be able to catch them or not. So I took to writing Lyle a newsy letter, and I would go to Kinko's and attempt an international fax. It didn't always work. But somehow we communicated, even though his responses back to me were basically, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I, again, I wish we had saved those letters. Over the New Year's holiday in 2006, Lyle had a really bad headache, which was very unusual for him. But he took some aspirin and, I'm fine. But a few days later, he suffered a stroke. He was in ICU for 17 days and put on a feeding tube. I called and emailed family and friends every day with the updates and all the medical jargon I had written down. It was a very scary and confusing time. He, uh, when he became stable, we had lots of calls and visits. He was released to a rehab hospital for two more months. And really the only reason I bring this up is just to illustrate how, how incredibly hard he worked to get through the, the speech, occupational, and physical therapy to get back to his normal life. And he did. He was even able to go back to work like duty and eventually return to his regular work. So he got his swagger back for a second time. After about three years, he started to have episodes of losing consciousness, and doctors and specialists couldn't tell us why. So he retired in 2011. He still had some health issues. I took early retirement and was hired back as a contractor a few days later. But things work out for a reason. And because of these series of events, uh, we were able to move to Logan, and I could work from home, and it gave me almost a, a decade full-time with Lyle and my mom. So we love to travel, especially cruises, probably noting all the travel pictures. <laughs> uh, 
We hung up our scuba wetsuits after the stroke. So that was a good thing. And enjoyed the, the wetsuit hanging up. Enjoyed a few more sedate hobbies. You probably saw Lyle at the clubhouse or riding around the villas on his recumbent bike. We had a little garden plot at the villas, and in the summer, he would always go over and water the plants, which was really just an opportunity to chat with the neighbors and maybe eat a few tomatoes. In 2022, we took a Valentine's Day quiz, and we scored 95%, <laughs> with the exception of what is the craziest thing you have ever done. Lyle could not come up with one single thing. <laughs> I could think of many crazy things he had done. <laughs> but Lyle had an amazing life and many adventures. I'm so grateful for the almost 37 years that we had together. I would tell you to cherish the moments. When Lyle passed away with all the beautiful flowers, cards, and well wishes, some dear friends also sent a, a picture frame that was engraved with, I, I, was supposed to, I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with you. And then I realized you spent the rest of your life with me. It gives me great comfort to know but Lyle is at peace. I'm living an eternal life more beautiful and joyous than I can even imagine. Lyle, I miss you so much. I love you forever. And I know you're watching over us. Maybe even with that little grin on your face. Thank you for being the life in my life. people who were touched by my father, so many of you who knew him for so long, and it brings great comfort to know that he had so many people looking after him for so many years. And losing a parent is never easy, um, especially when you don't expect it. You know, he struggled with his health for many years, but we always thought he had a little bit more time, because as we all know, his famous favorite phrase was, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> we all heard that many times. Him dying has made me remember to always be grateful for those that you have around you. And it brings up a lot of memories that I shared with my father growing up. He grew up on a ranch up in Wyoming, and we spent a lot of time there as children with our grandparents, with our cousins, and with our father. Even though he didn't live there anymore, we were always up there. There's always something to do on the ranch with the haying and the feeding and the branding and everything else that goes along with ranching. He was a hard worker and had a lot of integrity and character and was always one to crack a joke. He always was there to teach us some very important life skills. Not just riding a bike and throwing a ball, but also learning how to fish, how to hunt, how to cook a turkey, and how to ride a tractor. Um, I can't say that I was very successful at all of those things, but at least I know how. <laughs> the day he taught me how to drive a tractor was born out of necessity. I was about 12 years old and a scrawny little string bean of a person. I could not get the clutch to go in no matter how hard I tried. And his response was, figure it out. I showed you, figure it out. So after a few minutes of frustration and trying to figure it out, I did. And that took me jumping full weight on the clutch. <laughs> and got it done. And every time I had to shift, I jumped up and, you know, did full weight on the clutch. He was very, very often I heard him say, figure it out. And at the time, it's kind of annoying when you hear that as a child. You just want someone to give you the answer. You don't want to figure it out. But it has served me well throughout my, my life. 
being able to figure it out, being able to have those problem solving skills. And even when I'm ready to get up, I hear his voice in my head saying, it hurt. We spent hours at the ranch with my cousins, with my brothers, playing cowboys and Indians and building forts in the treehouse, riding our horse April, who we were allowed to ride bareback and was super gentle. Um, the one thing we all remember was my father's whistle. We could go anywhere we wanted to on the ranch, as long as when he whistled, that was it, we were running. It didn't matter where we were, we just needed to be out of breath and sweaty by the time we made it back to the house. <laughs> And of all the times and all the hours I spent trying to master that whistle, that was the one thing I could never do. <laughs> and one of my favorite memories was when we were up there during haying season, and after they got all the hay bales loaded on the trailer, if we made it up to the fields in time, he'd throw all of us up on top of the hay bales. We'd hold on for dear life with the twining, um, the bale twine, and off we'd go, you know, praying that none of us fell off, and somehow we all survived, I'm not sure if I would ever allow my child to do something like that. <laughs> I learned a lot of things from my father, and I wasn't able to spend as much time with him as I wanted. But especially during the last few years, it was such a blessing for him to be here, be at Maple Springs, be able to come up and visit him regularly. He wasn't able to do a lot of things towards the end of his life, but he loved watching movies, and he loved his M&Ms and various sweet, sweet treats. I was very much the enabler every time I came up, <laughs> always bringing him treats, and I don't think many of them lasted after I left in that afternoon. I know he's at peace now. And I look back on all the memories I have with him and think of him fondly. I'm now diving, and I'm scuba certified, and every time I go down that water, I feel his presence with me, reminding me to breathe, reminding me not to hold my breath, reminding me to look around and just have fun. And that was one of the things I will definitely remember from him, looking around, having fun, and remembering to figure it out and know that I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate it. Of Lyle by Georgie. Good. I like it. Is that better? <laughs> Tacey and I have been friends since 1980, but Lyle didn't really show up on my radar until 1988. This was what might have been the darkest summer of my life. I had just separated from my husband of 20 years. I had two teenagers I was trying to raise and my longtime married friends suddenly didn't have much in common with me. Tacey and Lyle were living in a small condo in Pueblo. Many weekends during that summer, my two kids, Eddie and Beth, plus Jamie, my daughter's best friend, would end up at Tacey's condo for the weekend. I think Lyle felt like the younger brother, older brother, to my sad little group. We laughed, watched movies, ate popcorn, and slept on the floor in the living room. One weekend, we had this brilliant idea that Lyle should teach Eddie how to scuba dive. Beth and I were living in an apartment that had a swimming pool. However, our apartment manager would not allow us to take scuba gear into the pool. Fortunately, a friend allowed us to use her backyard pool. That lesson went great. But the next lesson was a Pueblo <laughs> Reservoir. We made a day of a picnic and all. The reservoir tends to be muddy, making the visibility murky. This did not help Eddie's confidence, but Lyle was right there to help him. Things went well for about 10 minutes. <laughs> As they began to reach some depth, Eddie developed a nosebleed and out of the water they came. Scuba diving wasn't for Eddie. Soon it was fall, and I invited Tacey and Lyle and Jamie's family to celebrate Thanksgiving with us. As we feasted, the adults settled in to play Pictionary. 
There is a great photo of Lyle chatting with Janie's little sister. Lyle was always really good with kids. He made them feel like they were worthy individuals. Lyle was the closest thing I had to a brother, but somewhere along the way, he started calling me mom. <laughs> Tom and I married, and we owned a condo in the resort Steamboat Springs. Lyle was working in the North Sea and would fly home for his time off. We finally managed a weekend when all four of us were off work, and we went to Steamboat for a little R&R. &R. We managed to hit the fall foliage and beer festival weekend. We ate and ate and ate. <clears throat> the guys also drank a lot of beer. <laughs> Lyle brought along some caviar from Russia. Personally, I don't care where it came from. It tasted awful. <laughs> Lyle and Tom would periodically play golf together. Tom recalls that Lyle was a tailor-made man, a brand of golf gear. He had tailor-made clubs and even used tailor-made golf balls to the point where he would not play with another brand. When Lyle was in town, he would also join us for our Friday group meetings, also known as happy hour. It was always fun to see him there with our crowd of friends. Tom, Tacey, and I retired in 2014, and we three had one big retirement party at the golf course. Although I have lots of pictures from the party, I only have one of Lyle. Why? Because Lyle was our official photographer for the event. <laughs> After retiring, Lyle and Tacey moved to Utah. We miss them terribly, but we have stayed in touch. In 2018, Tom and I traveled to Idaho for a rose show. On the way back, we stopped at Logan for a couple days and visited. It was the last time we saw Lyle but we did chat with him via phone, and he always ended those calls with, bye mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tacey, for asking me to read that. You and Lyle, we're lucky to have such great friends. <laughs> Before I close, I'd like to give a few of my own thoughts about Lyle. And unfortunately, since my memory is so bad, I don't have a lot of specific stories that I can recall, but I thought I'd just share a bit about the relationship between Lyle and I over the last three decades or so. I do recall, and you saw lots of cruise pictures, I do recall a couple cruises where we would get a chuckle out of hearing Lyle before we could see him. <laughs> He'd be tooling down the ship's hallway, usually on his way to the sushi bar, and he'd wear tennis shoes that made a distinctive squeak, squeak <laughs> on the shiny flooring. That was our cue to get in line. Lyle's almost here. <laughs> anyway, since Lyle and Tacey met, Lyle and I have had kind of a brother-sister tolerating relationship, <laughs> which usually consisted of fond banter back and forth and lots of eye rolls from Lyle. Lyle could definitely dish it out, and I was quite happy to reciprocate. We kind of fed off each other, seemingly in a quest to see who could be the most witty and sarcastic. I'm quite certain that Lyle usually had me beat. In the early years especially, Tacey and I would sort of gang up on Lyle with our shenanigans. <laughs> Quite sure he did not always appreciate that either. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to sign my birthday cards and such to Lyle, very tongue in cheek, from your favorite sister in law. <laughs> Guessing he eye rolled at every one of those cards as well. I last saw Lyle over Christmas when I took Logan and Connor with me a few times to visit Lyle and Mom at Maple Springs. Lyle seemed to get a kick out of seeing the kids, and he was so cute with them. And the boys seemed quite intrigued by Lyle in his wheelchair. <laughs> I loved and cared about Lyle. He was a really good guy and a special brother-in-law. But probably what stands out the most to me is that Lyle loved Tacey. She was his rock, especially in the last few years when his health declined. Lyle knew and appreciated that 
Casey was his biggest supporter and advocate. And even though on occasion, Lyle and Casey would beg her, <laughs> it never failed when I was around them both over the years that I would always hear Lyle complimenting Casey or telling her she was beautiful or that he loved her. And to me, that is what meant the world, that he loved my sister. So Lyle, may you rest in peace. You were loved and you will be missed. Signed, your favorite sister-in-law. <laughs> It's an honor for me to read this tribute to Lyle, and it's from two of their dear friends in Colorado. And it's from Kathy and Rocco, and uh, Kathy is the one who's saying it in her words. She says, I've been friends with Casey and Lyle for over 30 years. I would like to share a few words about how fun and humorous Lyle was to be with. I had a swim party one summer at my house and Lyle was in the kitchen. Instead of opening the screen door, he decided it would be better to just walk through it, which he did. <laughs> we all asked, Lyle, are you okay? And he replied in his deep voice, I'm fine. <laughs> we did have to replace the screen, not the frame, just the screen. Another time, Tacey, Lyle, Rocco, and I went to the Colorado Rockies game. We had to cross a very busy street in downtown Denver. We all ran across, and when we got to the other side, we looked back, and Lyle was just walking along. We yelled at him, Lyle, hurry, the bus is going to run you over. Lyle said, I'm fine. <laughs> We spent many memorable times ringing in the new year with Casey and Lyle at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs. You should have seen Lyle's dance moves getting better as the evening went on. <laughs> we always had a blast. We are so grateful the Lord gave us such a wonderful friend. Lyle was a wonderful, loving, caring man. He loved Casey and his family. And I'm sure he would say, I'm fine. <laughs> Rest in peace, Lyle. Love your Colorado friends, Rocco and Cassie. I'd just like to thank everyone who has participated today with the program. We'll now finish with another song uh, from Mercy Me, I Can Only Imagine. And then the benediction will be uh, given by Kurt Peterson. Oh. I'm very sorry. Before we get to that, we will have Mike Hammers come up and sh share some memories and brother-in-law. <laughs> well, hello everybody. Um, my name is Mike Cameras. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and um, my family back there is Carla, Rhett, and Piper. Um, so, first of all, I want to say, Casey, thank you for the opportunity to come and talk about my uh, brother-in-law. And um, the story I'd like to tell you guys is um, the first time that I met Lyle. I kind of always considered it a romance <laughs> for a while, and felt always very honored to be part of his life. So I had been dating Carla for quite a while, and so she had the idea for one summer to say, hey, let's go to Colorado, and let's go see Tacy and her husband, Lyle. And I said, okay, what is Lyle like? And she said, oh, Lyle, 
He's done. He's been in the oil field. He's been a homicide detective. The whole thing. I said, really? Well, how did he get along with your ex-husband? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. Pressure's on. Right? <laughs> Bar set. So we get there, and I met Lyle. <laughs> and I remember reaching out. And I, we, we, we go to Vail, Colorado. So I'm going back up. I'm sorry. We go to Vail, Colorado. It's a beautiful place. It's off season. It's a ski resort. And it, was a, it wasn't very, a lot of people there, so it was a perfect time for us to go. And so we met Tacey and Lyle there. And so we get there, and I meet him, and the first thing I remember is the bare claw of a hand this man had for a handshake. And he shakes my hand, and my first thought is, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm really in trouble. So we get there, and we, we start, you know, spend about four or five days there. And we're hanging around the pool. And we're just talking, and Carla and Tacey is catching up. And I'm sitting there talking a lot. Now, please know that I'm in sales. So one of my responsibilities is to get to know people and talk to people and so forth. So I was trying to make a good impression. I wanted Lyle to like me. I really did. So I'm sitting there. We're sitting outside the pool. It's a little cool. And I'm asking Lyle. I said, so... Lyle, I hear that you're, well, in the oil field. I'm in the utility business. Um, are you a roughnecker? No. <laughs> okay, well, okay. So I'm thinking, okay, well, what's the next thing? So I said, um, you're a detective. So tell me a little bit about being a detective. I've seen some things. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm thinking, this is going down here. This is not working for me. So we uh, wrap it up, and later that evening, I told Carl, I said, Carl, I don't think Lyle likes me. I'm not, get, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not getting a pulse from me. I'm not sure. So the next day, she's like, no, it's okay. He's just that way. It's okay. So the next day, the girls had a spa day. So we get, and Lyle said, or first of all, we, get, we had we had spa, the girls had a spa day. And so Tasty comes up and says, well, what are you boys going to do? And Lyle says, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just taking his lead. And so Tasty says, okay, well, Lyle, just remember one thing. You got medication, don't drink. And I'm like, he's like, okay, Tacey. <laughs> so the girls, they have their spa day. And we get in, a, he, he comes to me and he says, have you ever had a bison burger? And I said, no, matter of fact, I have never had a bison burger. He says, let's go. We get in his car. And by the way, I have to honestly tell you all, this was a beautiful car. It was a Lexus coupe. I don't know how he got into it. He was <laughs> such a big man. I don't know how he got into it. I almost wanted to say, do you need some help? <laughs> but I didn't. So we got in it. We started heading out to the, to the veil. And we get it, and we're going down the road. And I can tell you all right now, he never took, he never looked at the road. He never looked at the road. He was so proud of that car. He was showing me every single doodad in that thing. And I am like, I don't know how I was in, can speak in front of you good people today. Because I, he just, he was just, it was crazy. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, you know, this is great. And I can't tell you how many stop slides we went through, how many bumps in the road. <laughs> but... I know one thing, there was not an oh crap pedal in that Lexus, because I was going like this the whole time. So we get there, and we, he says, we're going to get a bison burger. So we get to the bar, and there's a place, and then we, the first thing he does is we walk up these stairs, and there's this restaurant, and the first thing he does is ask the lady, do you have bison burgers? No, no, sir, we sure don't. We head out. So I'm like, okay. So we walk in, and he's sweating. He's walking up the stairs. I'm like, 
And I don't want to break this to you, Lyle, but we don't have to have a bison burger. <laughs> and he was just adamant about having a bison burger. So we get there. We finally find one. We're sitting there. We're having a bison burger. And the lady comes over. She said, what do you want to drink? Give me a beer. <laughs> and my first thought was, Lyle, you go. <laughs> you live your life. You do your thing. I like this. It was a pristine area. I mean, it was just, we saw the mountains and the aspens were changing color. And I'm sitting there with him. And then I go, oh, crap. What is Casey going to say? She basically said, hey, no more. You can't have any alcohol, right? So I'm thinking, well, if he has a drink, how in the heck are we going to get back? Because if it's anything like the way over here, we are in serious trouble. So we're sitting there, and, and I was kind of like wondering if he liked me, if he accepted me. I asked him a few questions. He never, he never said anything. We just kind of sat there, had a bison burger, drank a beer, and it was, it was great. Two guys just, you know, enjoying the moment. So we get back, and before he gets out of the car, and by the way, I think the beer probably helped with the drive, <laughs> because it was, um, it was a lot better, and I wasn't really freaking out. So we get back, and before he gets out of the car, he said, he looks at me and he says, don't tell Daisy. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 sir, I'm not going to tell Daisy a word. So, sorry, Daisy. <laughs> So a couple days go by and we're hanging out and um, we're in the we're we're there hanging out next to the pool. It was, like I said, it was off season, so it was cold. So um, we're there and I forgot. I decided to get in the pool and I decided to. If I remember <laughs> get in the pool. I didn't have any swim trunks. <laughs> so guess what? Uh, why I'll give you his. <laughs> now I have to tell you all, there's something special when a man shares his swim trunks with another man. It really, really is, as I gotta tell you. I walked a little taller. I mean, he was, come on, he was a, I mean, all with the, everything that he'd done in his life, and I, he, I was like, this a manly man, he was a rough necker, and just, you know, it was, it was, it was great. So, um, so yeah, anyway. Thank you, Lyle, for, for the swim trunks. And I don't ever put on my swim trunks, and honestly, don't ever stop and not think about it. But the only thing that kind of hurt my feelings was is that he never wanted them back. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened there. I kind of thought, hey, we got this thing going, right? It's a grown man's. But, no. so, um, so anyway, I just, I'll wrap this up. And first of all, I want to say, um, again, Tasty, we, the last, one of the last memories real quick was when we were at the formal night, and uh, we were there, and I think Lyle actually, he, he, he rented a tuxedo, but it was one size too small. <laughs> and he squeezed into this tuxedo, but we walked down the hall, and Lyle was walking like this, and he had Tacy on his arm. And the amount of love that this man had for Tacy, I could tell. He wanted the night to go absolutely perfect, and he loved you dearly. So with that, I just want to say, um, again, thank you for the opportunity. Lyle will be missed, and that, um, yeah, I'm, glad, I'm very fortunate to have him a part of my life, and uh, he loved you dearly. Alrighty, I'm glad we did not miss out on those memories. Um, we will now continue with the musical selection, I Can Only Imagine, and then following that, The Benediction by Kurt Peterson. Bye. 
his side I can only imagine What my eyes will see When your face Is before me I can only imagine Our dear Father in heaven, we're grateful to have had this opportunity to stay to come and uh, share some memories of Wild and for us today with what one person can do in their life and grateful for the hearts that have been touched by Wild throughout his life and we'll miss him and, and uh, we pray Heavenly Father for comfort and peace as life goes on with the Wild's family, particularly with Casey and his kids, and we pray for comfort and peace to be with them. And we're grateful, Heavenly Father, for the uh, blessings of life and the opportunity to be together as family and the importance that that plays in helping us be happy. And we pray for, pray for uh, good things, we pray for happiness, we pray that we might go forward and Use the things that we've 
felt today and, and the inspiration you've been blessed with to, to be better people. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.